It's that time. Let's play football, a wise man once said. Louisville spring game was, was last week. We're going to break it down on today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ooh, barely made it back in time trying to turn off that extra light. But um, as you can tell, different different setting of um, recording going on for me today. But nonetheless, what is constant, Grant Mulligan back on the Locked On the Louisville podcast to discuss a little Louisville football spring practice and the spring game. Before we do that, I want to tell you that this episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Grant, feels like I haven't seen you in, what, two weeks? How are you, man? It's, uh, it's been a long time as far as we're concerned, Dalton. I, I was starting to get worried he didn't want to have me back. But <laughs> it's it's great to be back. Got some ball to talk, and I'm excited to get back into the thick of it. Yes, sir. A lot of stuff to talk about. We'll break down the spring game, put it into two segments, offense and defense. Uh, the defense got the victory, which – Really doesn't matter. The scoring is a little bit different, but um, and then the final segment we'll talk about the new portal commitments, Willie Tyler and Cameron Kelly. Um, so Grant, I don't know about you, but offensively, um, a lot of my question marks were on the defensive side of the ball. I think rightfully so. Offensively, um, some new personnel and things of that nature. Um, what kind of really stood out to you? What was your main takeaway from the offense in this spring game? I, I want to preface all of our conversations about the spring game is that everything about it needs to be taken with a grain of salt, which I'm sure you know. Of course. But it, it's just a, a glimpse into it, and they play against each other all the time. But the thing that I saw immediately and, and that stuck out to me in not necessarily a great way is that the lack of depth on offense is a bit concerning as far as it goes. The first team offense definitely had a lot of bright spots. Uh, Jack Plummer looked sharp whenever he got the chance to get dialed in. They have some real impact talent near the top of the roster. But after that, we really start to start to fall down there in terms of production. I think the running back room is one of the groups. I came in with concerns, but I really feel like the depth there is definitely going to be sufficient mm -hmm. once we get rolling in the season with Maurice Turner um, and, and the rest of that group. But the offensive line is clearly lacking uh, some depth and that's been a concern for a little bit luckily they got that one transfer commitment in willie tyler and hopefully you can even go and grab another one because there, there's definitely a need and space for it but there wasn't a ton of of playmaking happening at the wide receiver position after the first group and at the quarterback position it was far and away the jack Plummer show and I was I was really hoping that Caleb Johnson was going to show us something that he would take a big jump in his development, mm -hmm. and it, it was a rough outing for most of them out there. But all in all, it's, it was uh, there's there's a lot to build on. It's interesting because you mentioned the wide receiver core. I mean, obviously Jamari Thrash is phenomenal. I think Kevin right. Coleman Jr. I think can obviously obviously be probably penciled in as a starter. Um, I thought Antonio or um, oh what's his name. Jimmy Callaway, not Antonio Callaway. Uh, Jimmy Callaway, I thought he showed some solid stuff as well. Um, but you mentioned depth, and I think that that's interesting because it's not like the personnel isn't there. I, I think that Louisville has the personnel in place, but um, what I think that we're seeing, it's kind of like the post Des Fitzpatrick Tutu Atwell year for Louisville, where it was like, okay. Who's going to step up? We kind of know who's going to step up, but it's more so like, okay, who's going to take advantage of the opportunities back then? You know, Gunter Brewer, one thing that he said is, look, it's wide open. You know, every time I talk to him, obviously he's with Maryland now, but every time I talk to him, it, it was obviously he, he said, it's a competition every day. Just because you played a lot one week doesn't mean you're going to play a lot the next. So I think, you know, you can kind of chime in on this, but I think you're going to have your core group of guys, and then it's going to be kind of riding the hot hand for the duration of the season for Louisville's passing offense. Yeah, first of all, glad you mentioned Gunnar Brewer, the GOAT, Freak Time Showtime, would not <laughs> be here today without without him. But 
I, I think you make a great point in the terms of the hot hand may very well be where this offense decides to go. As you said, the the top end of the group and Jamari Thrash and Amari Huggins Bruce and Kevin Coleman obviously bring a ton of talent to the to the top end, but in this spread out pro style passing heavy offense, it's going to be more than the top three guys who are going to be right. looked at to make plays. And there's going to need to be <laughs> guys who step up in a rotational style role who can come in and, and make the most of those opportunities. And I think that they have a lot of guys who have the opportunity to, to really make a splash and make an impact. It's just a matter of, of who gets in in the right situation and is able to make the most of it. I definitely agree there. And you mentioned, it, I think it's all about depth. We knew offensive line depth was kind of iffy. I think Friday confirmed that you still need multiple spots. And Jeff Brom obviously knows that. They went out and they got um, Rutgers offensive lineman Willie Tyler. Multiple other players have um, visited. More are visiting as well as we speak. There's a lot of interesting opportunities there. Another position outside of offensive line, tight end. Also showing some of that lack of depth. Um if you look based upon the need there, did you know, coming away from this game, did your notions kind of get confirmed, you know, about the about your viewpoint of the offensive line and the tight end position that you yeah. need more spots? <clears throat> yeah, I don't really think that we learned anything new necessarily. Just kind of it's confirmation, just maybe right? it was it was confirmation and maybe it's a little more drastic than we expected either that or the defense is much better than we thought and that's a very put, real put it this way Grant, and, and i hate to i hate to interrupt you but i think that this would be a good talking point because i'm curious to hear what you say who do you think are the for sure starters or should be the starters going into the fall already that are on the team that you can say yeah he's a lock to start just on on offense or in a particular offensive line particular offensive line i think Brian Hudson is the number one penciled in, locked in starter. I think he will be the anchor of the offensive line. Shouldn't be going anywhere. I think he is a very, very talented player who could mm -hmm. well play his way into draft consideration coming next year. Outside of that, it, it really is a battle. I think Michael Gonzalez in a rotational role last year showed a ton of promise and was penciled in at the starter left tackle. A, if he doesn't end up drawing the start, he is an extremely valuable reserve player, as he showed last year in a swing tackle role. He can play both sides. I personally would love to give him the chance to start, but with the new commitment of Willie Tyler, which we will touch on later, that's going to give that left tackle spot some competition. Uh, I think um, the Virginia transfer, uh, his name is escaping me right now. If you could, John me Paul in. Flores. John Paul Flores. I kept wanting to say John Michael Schmitz, but I know that's the center for I Minnesota. Keep, yeah, I said that the other time. I've been I, doing too much draft. I know. Talking stuff, man. I think that he should be in line to start at one of the two guard positions, probably the left guard, and then of course the um, returning right tackle. Another name, he's been here for so long. Renato cannot, Brown. Renato Brown. I think he should be in line to start, although I I think that if Gonzalez gets beat out of the left tackle position by – Maybe he moves to guard. Then maybe he, he could – natural position. Exactly. Uh, and that that's probably what his physical stature lends itself more to as well. I think Michael Gonzalez absolutely deserves a spot in that lineup. Uh, it just matters as to where. Of course, and I definitely agree with that. I think that the the surefire starters, I think that Gonzalez is going to start somewhere. Where? Who knows? Brian Hudson is going to start at center, and I think Renato Brown is pretty much penciled in at right tackle. But um, I think, like we talked about a little bit before, most of the concerns coming into this, or maybe not concerns, but just kind of curiosities and questions are surrounding the defensive side of the ball. I want to dedicate a little bit more time defensively than offensively, so we'll do that now. We'll talk about – um, what we learned from defense as much as you can learn in the spring game here in just a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, FanDuel. Obviously, baseball's here. There's been grand slams. There hasn't been a no-hitter yet, but there's been a plethora of double plays. There's no better place to get in on that MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. 
Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. You can make bets from uh, Aaron Judge to pick up where he left off with another home run. Otani to go over the strikeouts numbers, which, spoiler alert, he will. Uh, so on and so forth. So don't miss the chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, so diving on into the second segment of the show with my good friend, um, State of Louisville football recruiting analyst Grant Mulligan. Grant, defensively, most notably, a new base package than what we're used to seeing. The rumored 4-2-5 defense that Ron English and Mark Hagan are going to run. What were your preliminary thoughts from seeing it in action, somewhat, so to speak, on Friday night? So the immediate takeaway from the defensive side of the ball and with the scheme fit, obviously the highlight was going to be on the defensive line. It was this position group that was going to undergo the most change in terms of what is asked of them in this defensive scheme switch, and they did not disappoint. I was not surprised by this, as it's been a priority by Brahm and staff from the very beginning of them getting here to add pieces to that defensive line and the depth absolutely was apparent uh, at the spring game. I mean, they were getting pressure group one, group two, and group three. You know, even with Jermaine Lale sidelined for, from injury, Ramon Perrier getting in there. Uh, the defense is really predicated on the, the defensive linemen winning their one-on-one matchups, and it seems that we are in a depth position at which we have guys at first, second, and third string who were able to do that. So I think Brahm and co have done it's a blind and I'm really excited to see it translate out there on Saturdays. I definitely agree there. And I think that um, main thing for me is I kind of wanted to see, okay, we clear cut know where the needs are offensively. Um, It's addressing depth. It's maybe adding a couple more offensive line starters, maybe a starting portal tight end. Who knows? Defensively is kind of like, okay, I'm interested to see how these guys perform because, I mean, obviously we need linebacker help. Um, It's obvious with some of the visitors that were in the city um, this past week. But I wanted to see how the secondary did. Um, You know, I wanted to see how the interior did. There has been some news I can't confirm yet. There might be an injury to Jermaine Lole, which um, would be a bummer. Like I said, can't confirm, but nonetheless, um, it seems like the writing is on the wall somewhat, at least with Jeff Brom still recruiting interior defensive line. Outside of the linebacker position, Grant, what's the spot that you feel like they need to address the most ahead of next year? Outside of linebacker. Linebacker is obviously the biggest one, but I think that there's still a good level of competition that could be had at at the safety position. And I think adding Cameron Kelly was a really great starting point for this. Uh, Anytime in this defense that you can add a talented defensive back, whether that be at corner or whether that be at safety, I think you, you want to take that opportunity because in, in this pass heavy ACC that, that we're in, it's never a bad idea to, to have as many talented defensive backs as possible. But I think, the defense is solidified in a lot of positions and it's they're in a good spot in which it seems that their only glaring weakness is at linebacker. And I got to say during the spring game, the linebackers outperformed. Stan Quan is expecting. going to be a phenomenal That's not a surprise. Player, bro. That one's not a surprise. I mean, he, he, and that's great that he's to... playing like that, but Grant, <clears throat> I'm sure, you know, I'm watching some of the best linebackers in college football and even like the best freshman linebackers coming in, like Harold Perkins, best defender in college football, in my opinion. I mean, what he's able to do on the field is fantastic. Even he took some time to get on the field to learn the to learn the ins and outs of the position. Now, granted, he kind of went from a outside linebacker hybrid position at high school to now inside linebacker. But that's kind of the same way that Stan Quan Clark did. More of you know playing more on the outside of the inside rather than you know as a true middle linebacker that he would be kind of you know having to play. But four two five defense, it, it'll be interesting to see that role. But I was impressed. But I think that the main reason why you need linebackers, as I was telling somebody, is you don't want to rely so heavily right away on a true freshman to come in and star at the linebacker position. Could he? Sure. 
Should you rely on that? Absolutely not. Yeah, and a young guy, you want to give him the opportunity to get there, get out there and, and learn on the job and showcase that talent. But as you as you said, relying on him to be an every down player as a true freshman just isn't a position that you want to find yourself. If he commands that role based on pure, undeniable talent alone, more power to you. But he as all freshmen do, is going to have his learning moments. And you want to be able sure. to give him those in a controlled setting and not have him out there every single down being at times mm -hmm. could be a liability just based on lack of experience. I mean, he has all sure. the talent in the world and he will be an every down linebacker sooner rather than later. But if you have the opportunity to give him a rotational role early, let him learn on the job, and then develop into that player rather than make him be that player day one, I I would absolutely take the opportunity to do that. I definitely agree. Really quickly, Grant, before we get into the next segment, who um, who impressed you the most defensively? I think it's, it's hard not to say a guy like uh, the defensive MVP himself, TJ Quinn at, at linebacker. I mean, he was a guy who a lot of people had said coming into training camp that – or in the open practices that he looked like he had taken a massive jump and he helps ease a lot of my concerns in terms of sure. linebacker depth. While I still think they could add some talent at the top end, I'm feeling a lot better about the depth at linebacker and the quality players mm -hmm. we have in the second and third string because of guys like him taking a big step forward. Uh, it, it's, it's given me a lot of reassurance. So I got to say after the spring game, the defensive MVP himself, TJ Quinn. See, I like that. You know, TJ Quinn was one of those players, and I feel like there were like four or five of these types of players in the Flyville 21 class, the safety linebacker hybrid that we were kind of like, okay, what is this guy going to project as? Obviously, we didn't see much of Braylon Oliver at all. He transferred out pretty quickly. Um, but it seems like literally Jalen Alderman, safety, went to linebacker. Um TJ Quinn, safety to linebacker. Ben Perry, safety to linebacker. These defensive back hybrids kind of, you know, deciding to put on some more weight, uh, you know, build that strength up to be linebackers. I'm interested to see how literally all three of those guys are going to play this year. But I want to uh, dedicate a good amount of time to the new commits that the Cardinals have. We'll talk about Cameron Kelly, Willie Tyler here in just a second. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Um, and now this week, Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Special is here. It is bigger than ever. Follow along all 32 teams' first picks in a um, six-episode Ultimate Mock Draft experience. Only Locked On can deliver. All episodes are available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Final segment of the show, Grant Mulligan of the State of Louisville.com. Grant, Cameron Kelly, Willie Tyler, um, both coming from Power 5 uh, backgrounds. Cameron Kelly played the past four seasons at North Carolina, just committed on Monday. Happy birthday to Jeff Brom, by the way, a nice solid birthday present. Kelly, who recorded over 100 tackles with the North Carolina Tar Heels, started at safety, six foot two from Chesapeake, Virginia. You mentioned that competition at safety, and you kind of hinted at this. Anytime you can add a veteran presence that has played in the ACC, I think it's big time. But what do you make of the Carolina fans that are saying, well, he's not good. He's not that good of a player. Is this just kind of generic fan speak for a player that's leaving? Or is there some legitimate concern here that maybe he's not as good as the statistics suggest? There's always going to be some of that when you get into the transfer portal and you use, and you lose a player. But if you go back to his 2021 tape, and granted, that's going back a year, but he was third team all ACC and he was making a great amount of plays. I do think that he did take somewhat of a step back in 2022, but we can't forget the type of player that he can be at his peak. I mean, he had over 60 tackles he had four interceptions he was making plays all around the field and if they can even get a semblance of what that player was in a rotational role or in a starting role i think it's a really quality player to get also he's a guy who you can can get with a lot of starting a lot of game experience who can all can act as a leader in the room with a lot of ACC experience. He's played against a lot of great ACC teams. So I think more than just the talent that he brings, he could be a really strong leader 
in in that room and provide good competition at the strong safety position that's lacking, especially with Minka being injured as it currently is. Do we have any update on on Josh in terms of how long he's going to be out? I said Minka. My oh, Mink- Josh Minkins. I thought you said Minkins. I, said Min- I was like, I meant to say Minkins. I did. I oh, said you Minka. did. You did. I just completely I misheard you. I'm That's sorry. I didn't hear you say Minka. I'm Josh sorry. Minkins. I was, like, I was like, Josh is yes, hurt. Yeah. Josh Minkins. Yeah. He yeah. is. Um, he's he's missed today. time. Grand, my no, sinuses right. are messed up. I was <clears> like, no, no, no. he's hurt. He's he's missed some time and he's working his to way say, back from he's he's working his way back from injury. So giving him time to get healthy while not having to work him back into a full time starting role, um, or giving him somebody to spell those minutes is right. always a, a great opportunity. I think the the name of the game of what the staff is trying to accomplish is to create a complete and deep defense in which they can rotate guys in and out and keep bodies fresh, and that's always a place that you want to be. If I think you, you can, have to in this type of defense. Defensive absolutely. back versatility. I mean, you're asking a lot from this position. If you're going to play five defensive backs, you're going to have to have good numbers in that secondary. So I, I'm perfectly fine with, especially with, uh, really quickly before we talk about Willie Tyler, uh, Gilbert Frierson recruited out of Miami, listed as a safety, but seems like he could play more of like an outside linebacker hybrid. Do you think that he projects more of in that role, sort of like a Ben Perry, or is he more of a Josh Minkins type player? I think he could be. I think he'd probably be more in the in the Minkins type. If we're talking about Cameron Kelly here, um, I think I'm talking about he, I'm talking about Gilbert Frierson. Are you talking about Gilbert Frierson? He's he's definitely more of the the safety linebacker than he is the safety corner. I think Cam Kelly definitely fits the role of uh, he I can agree. be a safety in the box, but he also covers the slot. While I think Frierson is definitely more of a in the box, true in the box, come in and run support kind of guy. So having guys who fit different molds for different situations, I mean, that's, that's never going to be a bad thing. Having a really strong safety rotation, which seems like something that Brahm and company are trying to create. I think that adding Kelly is going to be a great addition to the safety rotation. I agree. I think he's extremely talented. I also like that experience that he brings from the Power 5 level. Another Power 5 transfer, Willie Tyler, who has been around um, the transfer portal for the past couple years, started out his career at the JUCO level at Iowa Western, transferred to Texas uh, didn't play in two seasons at Texas, then went to Louisiana Monroe, started nine games at left tackle, transferred to Rutgers where he played 11 games, started more or started nine more games at left tackle, um, and then is now a drag transfer. Uh, 6'6", 320 pounds joining the Louisville offensive line. Obviously will be at least in contention at the left tackle spot, solid iron sharpening iron type of possibility here in terms of competition. And I think it's awesome to add that depth because at this point, I'm not really sure who I would have pinpointed as the true backup at left tackle. Um, but I really like this addition uh, for the Cardinals offensive line to, at the very least, give you a veteran presence, very big offensive lineman that can at least play depth. Uh, you're you're exactly right. He has the exact kind of physical frame that you're looking for at, at the offensive line. He could operate in a kind of swing tackle if he doesn't win out the left tackle job outright. I think he has a real possibility to. And I, as we discussed earlier in the show, Michael Gonzalez has a lot of positional versatility. So just even if Gonzalez loses out the left tackle battle, which I think it'll be a very tough competition, I don't see Gonzalez going down without a fight. But he has plenty of opportunity to move around throughout the line, showcase his versatility, and operate in a swing tackle role from there. If if he if say one of them was to go down, he can move back out there. Or if Gonzalez wins out, and you have a guy like Willie Tyler who could spell either of the tackle spots. I mean, having a guy with 18 starts at left tackle is never a bad thing to add to your depth. I mean, granted, people will look at that and be like, well, he's bounced around from school to school. Is he really that good? Well, I mean, I think that sometimes it takes players some time to find their footing somewhere. And granted, it's – I mean, he's a he's a grad transfer. He gives you, uh, you know, a stopgap 
at the depth you know, depth need. Um, so I'm fine with getting players all in, you know, for one year. I'm um, granted you want to build some continuity and Louisville's in on some offensive linemen that fit that bill. But I mean, you try to upgrade the roster any way you can. And I, I think it's interesting that you mentioned this because a lot of people need to understand this as well. Just because Michael Gonzalez is penciled in right now as a starting left tackle doesn't mean he can't shift over to the interior where it might be a little bit more natural for him to play if injuries were to happen, um, if he gets beat out uh, in fall camp, whatever may have you. Um, but regardless, this is a good problem to have for Louisville because this is what all of the top programs deal with. They deal with players that are you know, competing with others, and at the very end of the day, just because you start doesn't mean you're going to play all the snaps. You need to have that depth. If you've watched Louisville football, offensive line depth just hasn't been, um, I think back to the 2016 year. Um, I, I think back to 2018. I, I think back to early on in the Satterfield days. This should be viewed. I understanding. I understand adding offensive linemen is never like a sexy addition, so to speak, but it's very critical for your team. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it goes back to the old adage and one that's very popular in, in the NFL ranks is you just want to get your best five guys on the field, however mm-hmm. it may be. So getting a guy who can compete for one of those best five slots, even if he's been a grad transfer or even though he's transferred many times, getting a guy who, who gives you an opportunity to add to those top five guys and at very worst can be your sixth, seventh offensive lineman is always going to be a great addition and a foundational piece for this team, a team that wants to win through the trenches and needs as many big bodies to get there as they can. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Great. Love having you on the show as always. Spring yes, ball um, is concluded, so now we just begin the wait until off-season workouts and fall camp. Grant can be found at Grant underscore Mulligan underscore. If you're listening to this, if you're watching it, you can obviously see the Twitter bio. Check out all the great work over at thestateofwool.com in which Grant operates as a recruiting analyst. He also has some appearances on From the Pink Seats podcast hosted by um, – um, Jacob Blaine, Jake, Matt, McGavick, Matt McGavick, and Vincent, Vincent Lococo. Lococo. I know what it took me, man. I was like, what, 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 uh, order am I going to say, man? But great podcast so hosted over there by three great dudes, um, uh, that know the game of football really well. And Grant hops on that pod sometimes. Uh, but yeah, a lot, a lot of great work around the city. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show for another edition of an episode with grant on it pay attention to next week after the nfl draft we'll have grant back on to talk about where some of the former cardinals yasir abdullah yaya diaby kitrell clark and more will end up in the national football league uh but like i said that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show everyone have a great day we'll see you right back here tomorrow